So we now pretty much know what the Subaru Solterra is going to look like, drive like, and be like, because Toyota has announced the BZ4X, which is the same car as the Subaru Solterra. I'll detail exactly what the Solterra will have, the battery specifications, the size, the range, all the things that matter. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the Electric Viking. Fantastic to see you today. Thank you for tuning in, subscribing, liking the videos, and generally just supporting the electric car movement. I call it the clean air movement. Personally, I don't really like breathing in cigarette smoke. I think you probably don't either. And for those of you who haven't already done so, time to start investing in the movement. I mean, seriously, people have made, well, billions of dollars. Just look at Elon Musk, the richest man on the planet, simply because he owns a lot of Tesla stock. I know there's more to it than that, but hey, you might as well take advantage of this situation and start investing yourself. So personally, I use the Stake app. I find that's the easiest app to use. It's free to actually make trades on the app. You don't have to pay per trade. I'll put a link in the description below. If you use my referral code, you'll actually get a free stock valued somewhere between 10 US dollars all the way up to potentially 140 US dollars, depending on how lucky you are. So jump on, click on the description below and start investing. Now you can actually buy ETFs, either BATT or LIT, which include different electric car stocks in those ETFs, including NEO, XPUNK, CATL, BYD, etc. You can't specifically buy just the shares for BYD or CATL, but you can buy those ETFs. You can also buy NEO, XPUNK, Tesla, and other manufacturers directly on stake. So jump on, get investing. Now, if you write a comment in the comment section below and someone replies to you saying, contact me via WhatsApp because you've won a prize, then ignore them. It's not us, it's a scammer trying to part you from your hard-earned money. Now, apparently Subaru are saying they're gonna take the wraps off the Solterra on the 11th of November. But frankly, it's extremely unlikely the Solterra will be much different, if at all any different, to the BZ4X when it's finally unveiled. Although it is possible Subaru will only offer the Solterra in the more expensive four-wheel drive versions. And the reason for that being that, well, currently Subaru only sells all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive cars. So if you want to see it, Subaru are going to do a 30-minute live presentation on YouTube. I'll put a link in the description below to how you can find that presentation. Frankly, I wouldn't waste my time if I was you, but hey, if you're a big Subaru fan, then you can do it. Here is what we know about the Solterra from the Toyota BZ4X announcement earlier this week. I made a video about the Toyota BZ4X. It was a bit scathing, by the way. I'll put a link to it in the comment section below and you can check it out. Anyway, the new Solterra will come with a 71 kilowatt hour battery and close to a 250 mile driving range and a bunch of new safety technology. Now, we don't actually know what battery chemistry Subaru are using or Toyota are using. It's either Panasonic battery or a BYD battery. Now we do know that Toyota and BYD have partnered on using BYD's technology in their car or essentially building the vehicle for Toyota. That's been spoken of as well. Obviously Toyota don't want to release this information. They don't want to say, hey, we don't build EVs. BYD does it for us or some, or some other Chinese car company does it for us. It's possible too. So we won't find that out for a while yet because the car is not due to be released until the fourth quarter of 2022, globally, by the way. Now, Subaru did suggest that it will only be offered with the four-wheel drive version because they said the Solterra is built from Subaru SUV DNA, including legendary Subaru symmetrical all-wheel drive and plenty of ground clearance, Subaru said in its announcement in August. Now, I made a video about that announcement. I'll put a link to the, in the description to that video as well, so you can check that out. Now, Subaru has also said that the Solterra all-electric SUV will be distinctly Subaru, meaning the new compact SUV will likely have a higher ride height and expanded all-weather capabilities and X-mode for additional off-road performance. 
Honestly, I think a lot of this is just marketing jargon because have a look at the difference between the Toyota 86, right? The little ice powered petrol vehicle, coupe, coupe, whatever you want to call it. And then the Subaru version. Well, they're pretty much identical except for a few body panels and a few little style changes. And, but overall, the car is you know 98% the same thing. I think you'll find that'll be the case with this car as well. So what does that mean for its motor? Well, it'll have an 80 kilowatt motor on the front and an 80 kilowatt motor at the back. This would give it a zero to 62 mile per hour or zero to 100 kilometer per hour time of 7.7 seconds and a range of 250 miles or about 400 kilometers. So the weight, well, the all wheel drive model of the BZ4X weighs 2005 kilo. So I'm gonna guess that this will weigh exactly the same 2005 kilo as well. For context, Tesla Model Y weighs 2,003 kilos. Now, Toyota is saying that this vehicle in all-wheel drive version will have a range of 460 kilometers using the WLTC protocol, and it will use be capable of using 150 kilowatt on a DC charger. Now, remember, those WLTC protocols are, well, they're a heap of garbage, basically, just bogus essentially and realistically if this vehicle could do 460 kilometers of range using a 71.4 kilowatt hour battery it would actually be a more efficient vehicle than a tesla model 3 highly unlikely i'd say the wltp range or the realistic real world range it's going to be about 400 kilometers with this car now apparently the toyota version of this will be able to be optioned with a solar roof panel that can add 1800 kilometers of distance per year based on Toyota's research. But unfortunately, if you actually look at the details of adding the solar roof, you're adding so much weight to the car and getting so little power back that there's no way you'll ever get your money back on that option. So don't tick that box. That's not a wise decision. It's more of a marketing tactic. Don't get me wrong. One day, I'm sure cars will have solar panels on the top, but at the moment, it doesn't make any sense. Now, apparently, this vehicle will come with a vehicle to load. And I'm making... I've made a video about vehicle to load. I'll put a link in the description. You can check out what V2L is if you're not sure what it is. Now, apparently target range for the battery is that it will re retain 90% of its capacity after 10 years or 240,000 kilometers of use. And cold market friendliness is bolstered further by a radiant foot heating and heat pump type aircon. So the fact that Toyota and, of course, Subaru, I'm sure will be saying this on the 10th of November, are saying that this vehicle can do 240,000 kilometers before it gets to 90% battery degradation. Means it's very likely it has a BYD Blade lithium-ion phosphate battery pack. Because, well, one of the key features of the Blade battery pack is the fact that it can do around about double the number of charges, charging cycles, without seeing battery degradation versus other ternary lithium battery packs. I talk a lot about the advantage of lithium ion phosphate battery chemistry and blade battery packs in the video I made about BYD's blade battery and the technological advantages it has over other batteries. I'll put a link in the description below to that video. So apparently this vehicle will have a cabin as wide as a D segment luxury sedan at one meters and best in segment front and rear legroom. On this theme, high soundproofing glass and wind noise reduction provides a quietness that enables clear conversation while driving. Sounds good to me. Now, in addition to that, it uses cloud-based navigation, has conversational voice control for functions like the wipers and aircon, can use a phone app as a key, presumably with NFC, and will accommodate over-the-air updates to assist to driver assist and infotainment software. So how big is it? Well, it's 4,690 millimeters long, so about 4.7 meters long, 1,860 millimeters wide, so nearly 1.9 meters wide, and 1,650 millimeters tall. Similar shape, but a little bit smaller than a Tesla Model Y, and slightly longer and lower than a RAV4. Now, what about delays? Toyota are having massive delays with delivering cars right now all over the world. Their sales have pretty much crashed as a result of that. Will there be delays for this vehicle? Well, speaking with media about supply chain shortages across its internal combustion and hybrid ranges, Toyota Australia sales and marketing boss Sean Hanley recently said there are no delays he's aware of 
for the electric crossover. At this stage, we've had no information about any delays in relation to that car. We're dealing right now with the immediate future, he said. At this stage, our plans are to continue with our launch plans around the BZ vehicle. He added approximately our planning launch time at this stage is around the fourth quarter of next year. Now, how many are Subaru and Toyota planning to sell of this vehicle? Is it a compliance car? Do they, will you really be able to buy one or will you not? Will it be affordable? Well, the news here is not so good. Don't expect it to be a volume game changer or to give the RAV4 any sleepless nights on the sales charts. Pricing will be announced closer to introduction, but this car will be expensive, as was the original Toyota Prius that we that was launched by Toyota back in October 2001. That's what one of the high-ranking executives from Toyota has said, and of course, the same will apply to Subaru. Now, why did they say it was going to be expensive? Well, they're saying that this is due to the significant research and development cost recovery, like hybrids, battery electric vehicle adoption and affordability will take time, but certainly not 20 years. They will eventually become a sustainable means of mobility. Now, in other words, they're saying, Toyota's saying right now, Subaru's saying right now, electric vehicles are not a sustainable means of mobility. I talk about that, a lot of their kind of unfortunate comments around electric vehicles in my video that I made about the Toyota version of this car. Probably a video you don't want to check out if you want to buy this car. If you want to buy it, well, just keep your head buried in the sand and buy it. Anyway, the, my point here is ultimately this will be an expensive vehicle and ultimately Toyota and Subaru are not planning to make a lot of them. So if you want one, you're going to need to put your hand up for it as soon as possible. As soon as they announce the vehicle, go to your dealer, tell them you want one. Tell them that price is no aim for you. You don't care how much it's going to cost. You want to buy one, and then you'll probably get one in the fourth quarter of 2022. Now, remember, there's a lot of Chinese vehicles coming to the market within a very short space of time. Within one to two years, there's going to be Chinese vehicles, electric vehicles available on the market, which are, well, basically this car, to be honest. Pretty much most electric vehicles now, whether you know it or not, are made in China or made using Chinese parts. There's just no way of getting around that fact. But those vehicles will be on par with their ICE-powered vehicles. Now, BYD, Aura, MG, Xpeng, and a range of other brands are coming to Western markets shortly with their cars priced on parity with ICE vehicles, which this certainly won't be. So if you're looking for something that you can more realistically afford, if price matters to you, then I recommend waiting for one of those, which may be here much sooner than you think. Thanks for watching the channel. Thanks for supporting the movement. Hope you have an awesome day. and I'm looking forward to seeing you again on the next video. Don't forget to subscribe and like, and let me know what you think about the new Subaru Solterra. Do you think it was a smart move that Toyota and Subaru essentially are going to sell the same vehicle just rebadged? Let me know. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.